डॉट मैप Okay, you note it down and till the time. Let's just wait for other students to join also, and then we'll continue the class. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, can you go up? It. Up. Okay. Wait. Here. Yes, ma'am. That question. Okay. The question. Okay, Farhan. What is the last thing that I you've written in your notebook? Am I audible, Farhan? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I wrote till cell size. Cell size. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and have you written about prokaryotes and eukaryotes? No, ma'am. Okay, then the thing that you see on your screen, you also note it down. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Sara, what is the last thing that you've written in your notebook? Ah, uh, let me check. I think it's diffusion. Okay, diffusion. Okay.
Okay, am I audible, students? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Irshad and Farhan, are you people done noting it down till here? I'm finished. Okay, very good. All right, just give me one second. All right, students, uh, switch on your video. Let's start today's class. Okay, everyone, switch on your videos. All right, so let us quickly revise what we had already studied. So we know that depending upon the number of cells in the body, the organisms, they are of two types, right? They are unicellular and they are multicellular. Now, apart from that, depending upon the absence or presence of nuclear membrane, the organisms are of two types. Again, prokaryotic organism and eukaryotic organism. Now, prokaryotes are those organisms that do not have a membrane-bound nucleus, meaning, and apart from that, they also do not have the membrane-bound cell organelles present in them. And then, the best example for a prokaryotic organism is the bacteria, isn't it? Now, moving on to the eukaryotic organisms. So, these are the ones that actually have a proper nuclear membrane present. And along with that, they also have the membrane bound cell organelles present and the example for it is human animals plants fungus all of these right so now who can tell me what are the three major components of the cell the three main components of the cell plasma membrane cytoplasm and nucleus very good plasma membrane cytoplasm and nucleus so, we had been discussing about the plasma membrane, right? So, we know that a membrane means a covering. An outer layer is what the membrane means. So, in that, we have seen that the plasma membrane, it is a protective covering which is present around the cell. And what is the function of this covering? It is protective in nature, meaning it protects the cell against any kind of harm, against any kind of thing that is present in the external environment. Now, this plasma membrane, since it can allow the stuff to come inside, meaning it allows influx, as well as it allows efflux, stuff to go outside. So, that is why we call it as selectively permeable membrane, meaning it can Depending upon what it selects, it can let stuff in and let stuff up. Now, with that being said, we'll come on to diffusion. See, diffusion is one of the properties that happens in the plasma membrane. Now, what is diffusion? So, it is the movement of gases, atoms, molecules. In general, it is the movement of substances from a region of its higher concentration to the region of its lower concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. 
so diffusion is the name of a movement of substances mostly gases do diffusion all kinds of gases they can do diffusion now this diffusion is very very important in the case of prokaryotic animal uh, organisms as well as eukaryotic organisms too because if we talk about the eukaryotic organism where does diffusion play a very important role in our body students diffusion any idea where does diffusion act in our body no one diffusion see all of us breathe right which gas do we take in while breathing oxygen oxygen very good so we take in oxygen and which is the gas we give out or exhale out carbon uh, carbon dioxide very good so this movement of oxygen inside and carbon dioxide outside this happens by diffusion only okay diffusion is that now how many of you have understood the meaning of a concentration gradient meaning high concentration low concentration how many of you have understood this thoroughly and how many of you still have a doubt in it you can tell me frankly i'll explain it yet again so how many of you have understood this very nicely tell me you have a doubt shazia okay what about others how many of you are still in a doubt in this topic ma'am uh, can you explain it uh, explain it again hmm sure i will explain it again you switch on your video first yes what about others everyone has doubt in this okay okay we'll do it again now see students if in anything okay if there is high concentration concentration means amount okay if i say high concentration it means more amount if i say low concentration it means less amount so when we talk about diffusion and more particularly if we talk about the diffusion of gases okay so let's just say there is a place wherein the concentration of one type of gas let's just say oxygen so concentration of oxygen in this place is high it means that concentration mean it means that oxygen is in more amount or less amount if i say that the concentration of oxygen is high it means that the oxygen is present in more amount or less amount more, more amount more amount more very amount. good exactly all of you are right so in this case what happens is that when the gas or any substance is present in a more amount in one side and in less amount in another side so this high to low is a gradient gradient means at one place anything will be at high concentration and in the other place anything will be at lower concentration so now the gas from the higher concentration will move towards the lower concentration and this movement which takes place from high to low concentration is known as diffusion is it clear now to everyone yes sure surely clear Yes, yes okay very good now yes, see i told you yes shazia are you saying something uh, this process is also called osmosis see uh, no diffusion is for gases okay osmosis is another process it is like osmosis is a type of diffusion only but it is water water is involved that we'll we'll come to it okay now see when we talk about the diffusion so i told you that as humans we exchange gases right we take in oxygen give out carbon dioxide because of diffusion so what happens like when we breathe in okay so oxygen we take in the oxygen it means that during the time of breathing in oxygen in the atmosphere is more as compared to the oxygen inside our body so inside our body there is low concentration 
outside meaning in the atmosphere there is high concentration so what does it mean that there is a concentration gradient isn't it so now the oxygen which is in more amount in the outside world it from there it comes inside our body clear now when we talk about carbon dioxide now carbon dioxide is in more amount in our body as compared to the outside world so now the carbon dioxide from our body goes out into the outside world always remember that in the case of diffusion the movement will always be from high concentration to low concentration clear yes ma'am so this this diffusion is very important for exchange of gases which happens in our body now the role of diffusion the most important role of diffusion is gaseous exchange now see here what i have told you is what i have drawn sort of like co2 in the body is more and CO2 in the external environment is less so CO2 from the body will go out into the external environment because of diffusion why because CO2 is a waste for our body we do not need CO2 so we excrete it out we exhale it out but oxygen we need oxygen so the amount of oxygen in the external environment is more and the amount of oxygen in our body is less so from the external environment the oxygen will come into our body and that is what is known as diffusion always remember that if like no matter what gas you are talking about whether it is co2 whether it is o2 always remember that the gases will move from a region of high concentration to low concentration and concentration means amount clear clear to everyone Yes, ma'am. Very good. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now coming on to the role of diffusion. Now we have seen that the diffusion is responsible for the exchange of gases, or the gaseous exchange. Now a very interesting thing is that the water also obeys the law of diffusion. See, the law of diffusion is that the movement will take place from high to low. So water also follows. the diffusion law meaning it will move from high region to low but remember that the movement of water is called as osmosis you can't call it as diffusion okay so we say that the movement of water is called as osmosis never call it as diffusion clear students any doubts no okay very good now remember that in order for the diffu uh, osmosis to occur there are many things that are taken into consideration or there are many things that are very important one of the most important factor which will affect osmosis is solute concentration now see all of you have had lemonade yes mm -hmm. all of you have had lemonade no okay. yes what are the ingredients of lemonade can someone tell me sugar salt sugar water water lemon lemon right sugar water and lemon and if you remove the lemon it becomes sugar water solution isn't it that is sugar water okay now when we talk about solution solution is very important to remember in terms of osmosis see the solution is made up of two things one is the solute and the other is the solvent okay now solvent is the thing which is present in major amount just one second see you yeah as i was saying uh, solvent is always present in more amount for example if we are taking the case of sugar solution okay sugar solution now in sugar solution the water is the solvent okay the water is the solvent meaning solvent is the thing in which you dissolve the stuff it can be any liquid but anything that is in more number that is the solvent 
and solute is what we are trying to dissolve so here sugar is the solute so sugar is the solute and water is the solvent and when we mix them together what do we get we get a solution clear this much is clear to everyone okay yes ma'am now see this thing here i've written that the most important factor that affects osmosis is solute concentration meaning the concentration of solute is the most important so here if we see solute meaning the concentration of this now imagine students if in a glass you have taken uh, let's just say this much of water okay only this much and if i ask you to add five or six big spoons of sugar what do you think will happen will you be able to make the solution yes or no no ma'am why ma'am because the sugar is more hmm. the sugar is in much more amount isn't it yes, so if if i say that and sugar is also known as solute right so if yes, i say that solute is like in a concentration or in a solution solute is more so what will happen to the solvent will it be more or will it be less it will be less ma'am yes it will be less right always remember when the solvent will be more then the solute will be less and when the solute is more the solvent will be less okay so whether the solute is less or whether the solute is more this is very important for osmosis to occur now why depending upon that there are three kinds of situations that we will have to be studying the first is hypertonic solution hypertonic solution okay now in this case what happens we are taking a cell okay cell has water okay so we are taking a cell and then there is an external environment so this is the external environment and this is the cell now what happens is that in the external solution okay i'll draw it here so that it is better so we are talking about hypertonic solution now we are going to see what happens to the cell in a hypertonic solution now as i told you that mm, this is the external environment okay external area and then there is an inside cell okay now see this thing for example in the external area there is i like i have kept a dish okay in this dish the solute concentration is more c o n c dot means concentration so the solute concentration is more and this is a cell okay the cell has a cell wall plasma membrane and every okay students any doubts up until now you've understood the whole entire situation Yes. Okay. Now, so if I say that in the external environment the solute concentration is high, it means that the solvent concent concentration is high or low. Low. Everyone agrees that the solvent concentration will be low. Yes. Okay. Low. okay very good now what do you think will happen if we take this cell and we take this cell and put it inside this area like this okay now what do you think will happen here solute is high and solvent is low so what will happen students the cell will shrink the cell will shrink yeah that is true but how the cell shrinks 
remember that whenever a cell is kept inside a hypertonic solution hypertonic means a solution in which solute is high solute concentration is more so the water from the cell will come out into the external solution why because the amount of water in the external is low and inside the cell it's high so the water moves from high concentration to low concentration isn't it so the water from the cell will move out to the place where it is low and if the water comes out of the cell then the cell will shrink so whenever we put a cell inside a hypertonic solution the cell shrinks is it clear students yes any doubt yes. does anyone have any doubts regarding this no ma'am no, ma okay very good now moving forward the case of hypotonic solution now the next case is hypotonic now hypotonic is just the opposite of hypertonic now in this the solute concentration is less and the solvent concentration is more so now if this is the solution area and here solute is less and solvent is more and now i have kept the cell inside now what do you think will happen students don't tell me shrink or anything tell me what will happen to the water the water will go inside the cell Exactly. the water outside the cell will uh, goes in, into the cell correct the water which is in a higher concentration externally it will now move inside the cell and if water comes inside the cell the cell will become big so the cell will swell up clear so remember that if you put a cell in a hypotonic first the only thing to remember here is that just remember one thing and this whole thing will be clear whenever you talk about hyper hypertonic so remember that solute is more and whenever you talk about hypo remember that solute is less then you can make the whole entire thing by yourself isn't it because you people already know that whenever solute will be high solvent will be less and whenever solvent will be more solute will be less so if you take a cell and you put it inside a hypertonic solution the cell will shrink right but if you take a cell and you put it inside a hypotonic solution the cell will swell up is this thing clear to every single student here yes. okay very good now coming on to the third case that is isotonic solution now in this case the amount or the solute concentration outside uh, inside the cell and the solute concentration outside the cell is equal so like net movement of water is same right you can't say that nothing will happen if you put a cell in a isotonic solution clear and remember and remember students many a times this solute concentration is also known as salt concentration it is the same thing okay clear students yes It's any not... doubts in this whole entire thing no ma'am no ma'am okay very good all right now you people note down till here then we'll move forward Uh, you've written down plasma membrane, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. For all those that have not written plasma membrane, you can write down plasma membrane also, and then continue with diffusion.
Everyone done? Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma okay, okay. Do it. Tell me once you're done, then I'll stop. Arma. Dharma.
Kristen. All of you are done? No, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay, I'm waiting. Done. Done, ma. Everyone done?
Yes, ma'am. Okay, you can uh, note this thing also down so that you will know, like, in with reference to the cell, how we are doing. And always remember that hyper means higher concentration of solute, hypo means low concentration. Of solute. So you note this also down so that you'll remember the class. Done, ma'am. Done. Everyone's done, students? Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. Yes, so we had discussed up until now everything about the three kinds of solution. Now, students, tell me, does anyone have any doubts in that? Excuse me. Hmm? No, yes. I'm in I can't hear you, dear. Your voice is very like it's it gets cut in the middle. Can you can you write in the chat box, please? Write in the chat box, Shazia. So students see the applications or the examples part of it. Uh, dear, it's not isomatic, it's isotonic solution. Okay, Shazia. And in isotonic, 
the net movement of water is same because the amount of salt in the either side is same so amount of water is the same so nothing will happen to the cell if you keep it in an isotonic solution okay hmm? clear shazia okay now see in terms of application and in terms of examples we are going to see this thing that plants they take in water or they absorb water because of this hypertonic hypotonic solution and everything okay and also fresh water organism use this mechanism now moving forward see we know about the plasma membrane and that it is the outer membrane which is the protective layer it is the outer covering and everything remember that the plasma membrane is made up of two most important components and that is the lipids and the proteins now lipids and proteins both of these are the organic molecules that are present okay so the organic molecules because of which the plasma membrane is made up of that is what we call as the organic molecules okay the lipids and the proteins now moving forward there is one more term that we need to see and that is the endocytosis now see endocytosis it takes place in the case of amoeba now what happens amoeba gets the food or procures the nutrition with the help of pseudopodia it means that false feet pseudo means false podia means feet so what happens whenever food comes near amoeba it draws out its pseudopodia takes the food inside so this process of engulfing food meaning taking the food particle inside from the external environment is known as endocytosis the other name for endocytosis is ingestion and remember that this is a very famous mechanism which takes place in amoeba and it happens with the help of pseudopodia clear to everyone yes sir yes sir all right okay very good okay students so now you can note this also yeah you can note it down and we'll keep it till here only so you note down and tell me once you're done Done, students. No, ma'am. Okay. okay.